This video is going to show you how you can set up your weekly agenda to show up on your home page. Now at the bottom of this video in the comment section, you'll see different topics with times. If you click those times, you'll go directly to those topics. That way you can skip things you are already familiar with how to do. So we're going to start off with how to create your home page. So you'll open up your course. On the left hand side, you're looking for the link that says pages. In the upper right hand corner then you'll click add a page. I title mine weekly agenda. Um, of course you can title it anything you want, um, but this will be the name of the home page. For now I'm not going to type anything here, but I am going to scroll down and say save and publish. It's important you click publish. Uh, if you just click save, the next step won't work for you. Then up in the right hand corner, click your three dots and say use as front page. Now, if this isn't an option, that means you haven't published it. So just click publish and then this will work. All right, now it's going to be my front page. I'm going to come over here to home and I'm going to set it as my home page. So I'll say choose home page and choose pages front page, save. From here, that page will default automatically to my home page. And this is where all of my students will land every time they open up my course. I can also edit from here. So I don't need to go back into pages. I can simply click edit and I'll be good to go. So now let's take a look at some options for when it comes to typing up your weekly agenda. So I've kind of got some examples here or some formats here listed. Let's just go through each option. First of all, on the sheet that you are given, it will tell you your requirements. The requirements you're currently seeing is for the intermediate school and the middle school. This high school only has three requirements. Agenda resources is one. Due today is another requirement and homework is their third requirement. All right, so you type up your uh, week, maybe num you know give them the day and the date, and then you kind of type up your requirements. And then next to it, you can um, just kind of fill it out. Right, so I could say um, Google Slides presentation for day one. What is due today? Actually, nothing is due today because it's the start of a new unit and homework. I'll finish. Okay, so that's one way to do it. It's just simply write down the date and fill out the information. Okay. This is similar, except for instead of having it go side by side, you would do it underneath. It just has a, a, a nicer look to it, but it's basically the same, the same thing, right? And I could just keep going and keep typing it in. So these two are quite similar. You're literally just typing it out. Notice though, for my Tuesday, I've got the font a little bit bigger and a different color than I do Monday. Let me show you how I did that. I just highlighted what I wanted to change. Over here are my font size options. I'm going to choose 14, just make it slightly bigger. And over here are my colors. This is my text color, which I'm going to use to turn it red. But I also have a highlighting color. I'll show you what that means. It just highlights it. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. And then I think I'm also going to bold it. Now I've got all these different options up here that I can play around with, but I think that's what I like for now. It stands out so I can easily see Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday, etc. All right, so if you don't want to type it side by side, it looks you know, maybe not the way you want or you don't like it this way, another option is to put it in a table. Okay, put your requirements on the left, fill in the table on the right, and then it's super easy if you make this template, well, even if you make this template, it's super easy to copy it. Control C, copy, and then come down here and Control V, paste it. So once you've made your template, fill it in for the week so you don't have to keep recreating the table or keep recreating your list, and then you can just fill it in with the details. All right, so let me show you how I made this table. Put your cursor where you want the table, and up here, you just click the down arrow, choose table and how many you want. So for intermediate and middle, it's two across, five down. I don't want this to be even. I want it to you know, look more like this. So I'm just going to click on that line and drag it. Oops, sorry, drag it where I want it. There we go. 
And then I can fill in my information, topic, agenda, resources, assignment, due today, and homework. And remember the high school, you just have the three requirements. I'm going to highlight all of the boxes and choose bold. All right, and then you'll notice I turned one of my rose colors just to have it stand out a little bit. Um, I will show you how to do that as well. There are several different ways you can do it. Um, this is just the way that I find to be the easiest, but you surely can use whatever method you want. I don't necessarily want the whole box to turn a color, although that is possible. If I highlight the whole thing, come up here to table and choose table properties, I would choose advanced and change the color here. Now the whole table would turn color, but I just wanted the row. So I'm gonna highlight the row, come up here, choose row, and then choose row properties. Again, hit advanced, and here's where I'm changing the color. Now I can say the color name, but if I do that, I'm gonna get whatever color their green and black all right, to me that's too dark. See how I like it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go a little bit fancier and go back here. And instead of typing the color, I'll leave black. I want a specific green. So there's a HTML color codes website that you can go to and I'll provide the link uh, for you if you were interested. And the colors are over here. You just simply find the color you want, highlight the code, Control C, copy, come over here, Control V, paste, and now I'll get that exact color I was looking for, okay? So again, I can color the whole table, I can color just cells, I can color rows, I can do it however I want. If, if you wanna fancy it up, you can, all right? All right, the last option for your agenda, many of you use um, a Google Doc or Google Slides for your agenda. If you use Google Slides, my recommendation is every slide is a week. So then as you change slides, you're changing weeks. So let me show you how you would do that. First, you're gonna go to, well, you're gonna put your mouse where you want it, um, actually for that case. Let me get rid of all of that because I would want it to be the first thing on my page. All right, and then I'm gonna go to the down arrow or the V looking icon and I'm gonna choose Google Apps. And when it loads, I'll simply choose what it is that I'm trying to embed. So I have it saved here as my weekly agenda. Now, I don't wanna link it. My agenda has to be visible inside that home page. What we're trying to do is keep students from having to click around to find the agenda. We want it on every teacher's home page visible right there so that when the student wants to see what they're doing all week, they only have to click um, say seven times if they have seven teachers, five times if they have five teachers. We don't want them to have to click on the home page and then click another link and so forth because then it becomes an issue of multiple clicks and nobody knows where to look for anything. So instead of linking, we are going to embed. It'll take a second here as it loads and goes through an authorization process. And now it's going to, let me hit save so you can see it better. Put that whole Google Docs and you, you follow the same exact um, method for your Google Slides. And it puts it all right there so students can see the Google or the weekly agenda just right there. They don't have to click anywhere else to see it. Okay. Oh, I'll have to get rid of that picture because I have it on my dock. I wouldn't want it twice. All right. So that's another option to just embed it. All right, so we've talked about the different ways you can type up your agenda on your homepage or embed it from a Google Docs, Google Slides, but now let's talk about how we're going to link our activities directly to the online source. We, we wanna try to avoid saying to kids, um, complete this assignment, you'll find it in the assignments link or you'll find it in the modules. We don't wanna send kids to go looking for things. Instead, we're gonna link it directly right there. So when we say complete this assignment, all they have to do is click on it to get directly to that assignment. So anything that is blue or blue underlined, those are all direct links. So my kids could just come here, click that and go directly to there. I don't have to explain where to go over here to find it, okay? So I've got options for linking. Um, let's pretend these workbook pages are in my Google Drive. So then I simply can 
go to my Google Drive, find those workbook pages, and then what I need to do is get the shareable link. And by the way, I probably didn't mention this when we embedded our Google Doc, you also have to go into your weekly agenda in your Google Doc or Google Slides and make sure you open it up. I would even recommend not just opening it up to anyone at Westfield can view it, but clicking the down arrow, clicking more and choosing anyone with the link. Specifically for the high school, your kids are not Chromebook one-to-one -one devices, which means they could be using their personal Google account. And if you limit it to their Westfield account, um, it'll be denied access. So say save. So when you embed your Google Doc, Google Slides as your weekly agenda, just make sure you've done that, that step so people will be able to view it. Okay, so I have gotten my shareable link. I've copied it. I'm gonna come back to Canvas. Notice I highlighted it. it. It just makes it a little bit prettier in the end. I'm gonna come up here to link to a URL, Control V to paste it in and hit insert. And now that is a link, okay? If I just paste the link in, I can do that. I'll hit space to turn it into a link, otherwise it stays black and it's not clickable. But see how that's just like a lot? So instead, it's nicer if you highlight the words you want to be that link and then put your link in. It just makes it neater, crisper for kids. Okay, so I linked to an outside URL. So any place on the website you wanna to link to, that's how you do it. If you wanna to link to someplace inside of Canvas, Again, I'm gonna tell you to highlight the words you want to be the link just to make it a little bit prettier. Come over here, in this case, it's an assignment, so I would look in the assignments. But just know, I can link to files, images, pages, and any of these things are all linkable. So then I simply come down here and I would find the assignment that I'm wanting to link to. Oh, it's gonna load slow, so you know what? I'm just gonna pick this one, even though it doesn't say Telltale Heart. Um, and then that turns into a link. Now, the other thing I can do if I don't want to highlight it first is I can simply come over here and pick, a, pick the assignment. Notice it's going to call it whatever the name is. So that might work for you just fine as well. Maybe you don't want to highlight, highlight first. All right, so that's how we're going to link. And listen, I realize not everything is going to be able to be linked, but as many things as you can directly link to, the better for kids. Um, obviously, on e-learning days or days you have a sub, you'll want probably everything linked. Um, but as much as you can, turn those worksheets into digital PDFs so that you can link it in case the kid um, forgets to take his book home or doesn't have his proper materials in class that day. They can still participate using that link. Um, so anytime you can, link to an te online textbook, link to Canvas assignments, um, link to worksheets. Anytime you're able to do that, the better. All right, last but not least, if you want to add images or even link from images to somewhere, you can totally do that too. So you can make this as plain as you want or as fancy as you want. It's really up to you as long as you have the agenda right there on your home page, whether you've embedded it from a Google Doc or typed it up in a table or just simply typed it. That is all that's being required of you. So last but not least, if you want to add an image, it's super simple to do. You can come over here to images. Say upload a new image, choose the file, and then just have your image downloaded. Now you can upload a GIF, or if you call it GIF, you can do that. Um, like I had the happening this week was a GIF. Um, so let me upload one of those and show you. I don't do the decorative image, so I just put the check mark there to get rid of it. Um, so I'll upload that. And then to change the size, simply click on your image. Your little squares on each corner will come up and you can make it whatever size you want. So we have the option of GIFs or we have the option of plain images. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll do this one. Again, I don't necessarily do the decorative image. You can mess around with that if you prefer it. I say upload. All right, and again, to change the size, let me make this bigger. Click on it, the little corners will come up modules. Now, some of you guys like to um, have your modules as your home page, and all of a sudden we're disrupting that by saying your agenda has to be on your home page. What you could do is make some sort of image or button, or simply just type the word modules and make it as big as you want. You do that too. 
um, you would change the color if you wanted to, um, but you can make these links to your modules. So it's still on the home page. Kids would just click it to go there instead of having to come over here and click modules. So if I want to make my image a link, and this is any link for any image, I simply click on it to highlight it. And in this case, since it's saying modules, I'm going to come over here. Oh, this class doesn't have any modules. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to pretend. Oh, I probably don't have anything in this class. There we go. We're going to pretend this is the modules because they all link the exact same way. And you would simply click on the modules you wanted it to go to. Okay, so your current module, your current unit of study. Um, all the modules will show um, whichever one you link to it is going to be the first one that shows. So if you've got four modules visible to students, just pick one of those because once they click it, they're going to see all of the modules that are visible to them. So it doesn't really necessarily matter which one you pick, just select one. All right, and then same thing here. If I wanted to make these words because I don't want to do an image, the link, that's fine. Again, pretend this is my, you know, my modules down here. And just click on it and it turns it into a link. Okay, if I hover my mouse there, you're going to see it's blue and underlined. So we know it's a link, and this one is also a link. All right, so that's a, a, you know, one last way to kind of fancy up your um, page if you want to. I've shown you how you can add color. Um, you can add color to your whole page if you wanted to. Uh, it's a little bit harder, but um, it's definitely doable. Just email Linda Horner if you want the directions on that. But you can also add color to tables. You can use tables for your weekly agenda or not. It's up to you. You can embed Google Doc or Google Slides if you prefer. But the key is, when kids click on your course, they must be able to immediately, right there in front of them, see the weekly agenda with the most current week on top. Whether or not you add pictures, extra you know, resources, whatever, that's totally up to you. Again, you can be as plain or simple as you want it, but the most current week needs to be there. Then, as you finish a week, you'll scroll down and you need to have all the previous weeks listed as well. So once you get to a whole quarter, you'll have nine weeks with the most current on top, followed by the previous week, by the previous week, by the previous week for all nine. If you're a trimester, that'll be 12. And then at the end of that quarter or trimester, you can delete all those weekly agendas out and you'll start fresh. But this way, if you have a student who was absent you know, say Thursday and or Monday uh, or Thursday and Friday of last week, and they're looking at the current week, they don't have to go and find it. They can just scroll down and see it. There was what I missed Thursday. There's what I missed Friday. It's all in one place, regardless of um, what they're looking for. The whole quarter is right there or the whole semester is right or trimester is right there. All right, if you ever have any questions about how to create your home page, how to add your weekly agenda information, how to pretty it up, you can always email me at Linda Horner and I'm happy to help answer your questions or even sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and help you create your page.